I'm going to say a few words about, about Insight, uh, hopefully demystify it a little bit for you, um, and then we'll have some follow-up pre um, uh, presentations from Brida Kiernan, our Chief Operations Officer, and Yvonne Smith, one of our Funding Diversity Officers, to talk about the, the impact uh, in numbers uh, uh, that Insight has had over the last 10 years. Um, I suppose as we celebrate 10 years of insight, uh, it's useful to reflect on the journey we have been on over those 10 years, because I think that insight is probably best understood in the context of that journey. So Insight formally commenced in 2013, um, and before that it was recognised that Ireland had a world-class ecosystem, research ecosystem in data science, but it was also recognised that it, this ecosystem was quite fragmented, with pockets of complementary expertise dotted around the country. And so Insight was conceived as a grand experiment in some way of bringing together those existing pockets of expertise into one entity. And this had never been attempted before uh, in Ireland uh, or in Irish research, so it genuinely was a leap of fate by Science Foundation Ireland and the department at the time. Uh, and of course it required a completely different approach uh, and mindset uh, to a research centre because it meant bringing together existing initiatives which were already well established as research programmes of scale and research centres in their own right. So it required the researchers, the lead researchers involved in the universities to really leave their preconceptions of what a SFI research centre is at the door and invent a whole new way of doing things. And, and incidentally, that's why Insight is different to the other SFI research centres in terms of how we're structured. Um, we are co-led by multiple universities. Uh, we have a, a, a central operations team, including myself, uh, which manages the centre at a national level. And then we have local leadership, uh, research leadership, strategic leadership and operations leadership at each of our four co-host sites. Now, as you can probably tell from that, that sounds like quite a complex undertaking. And at the time, it was very, very unclear how this would all actually work in practice. But great credit is drew, due to the founding Insight directors uh, who are here with us today, Barry Smith, Alan Smeaton, Brian Caulfield, Barry O'Sullivan, Padraig Cunningham and Stefan Decker, uh, the original CEO, Ollie Daniels, and of course the uh, inimitable uh, Mike Turley sitting down the back now, uh, who's recently retired as our COO. Because um, all of these, these people embraced this challenge and effectively laid the foundations for what Insight was, was to become, and for that we are very, very grateful. Um, and we should be under no illusion that it was very challenging. It was something that had never been attempted before. So there was speed bumps, uh, there was sometimes detours, sometimes dead ends along the way. Uh, and it actually would have been easy at various different junctures to basically you know, collectively shrug our shoulders and say this was unworkable. But the leadership preserved, or persevered, they did preserve as well, but they persevered, uh, not just for the sake of it and not just because of the funding um, on offer, because they genuinely saw the opportunity to build something impactful for Irish research into the, uh, into the future. Uh, and the fact that we're here today celebrating all the successes you'll hear about this morning uh, is, is evidence that that grand experiment was an unqualified uh, success, uh, in my opinion. Um, and the impact figures that Breda will bring us through from our most recent economic impact report, um, I suppose, are some quantitative evidence of that success and that evidence and value to the Irish economy and to the taxpayer. But from a more central research centre perspective, the, the question I feel we always have to ask ourselves is whether in insight we have genuinely achieved something greater than the sum of the parts. And as a consequence that we are pun punching above our weight. Uh, and for that, we need to look beyond the scientific uh, excellence of our researchers, which I hasten to assure them I take as read and for granted, but also to look at what we can achieve as a team. And we have a litany of successes which are only possible on the basis of Insight working as a team. So, for example, Insight's centre-wide team on trustworthy and explainable AI is a multidisciplinary team that mixes foundational computer science with cognitive science, social science, ethics and the law, the outputs of which are regularly published in the top-ranked AI venues, journals and conferences in the academic community. But importantly, the participants of that initiative also regularly feed into policy, both nationally and internationally. We're at the forefront globally in leveraging data from wearable devices to understand or enhance, enhance human health thanks to a multidisciplinary team of physiotherapists, computer scientists, engineers, medical and health uh, experts and human performance experts. Our work in cultural analytics is transforming the face of historical research. The team brings together artificial intelligence and machine learning experts with researchers from the humanities and social sciences to address important cultural research questions in a way that would be impossible otherwise. 
We have a team of researchers who are passionate about addressing the well-known equality, diversity and inclusion challenges in our domain. And in this context, we're actually eating our own dog food by applying machine learning techniques like enterprise scale knowledge graphs and natural language processing to our large data sets that we gather routinely within the center, normally at the behest of SFI, but with a view to better understand our own EDI challenges so that we can understand those and take targeted action into the future to try to address those challenges. We have teams of researchers leading the conversation and setting the research agenda in Europe, and our success in securing non-exchequer funding um, is a direct result of that. So we calculated it in advance of this particular event and for the economic impact report. Since 2013, Insight has secured 81.8 million in non-exchequer funding from EU programmes across 160 projects. We've also established uh, strategic partnerships with key initiatives in Europe. So for example, we lead the AI for EU um, the project, which is building the European AI on-demand platform and ecosystem. And we've established strategic partnerships with the likes of the BDVA and various Fraunhofer institutes, including Fraunhofer FIT in Aachen and Fraunhofer ISST uh, in Dortmund. And we hope to, in the very near future, make a significant announcement around one of those uh, partnerships. So uh, please stay tuned for that over the coming uh, weeks and months. And importantly, we can also assemble teams at short notice to respond to national emergencies or national priorities that come at us uh, in, a, in a surprising way. So the uh, evidence of this, I suppose, is the insight researchers who contributed to the national response to COVID, whether that be our insight researchers who were members of IMAG, uh, providing daily updates to NEFID, uh, responding to specific asks from for example, the Department of Food, Agriculture and the Marine to help address the outbreaks of meat processing plants, or helping advise on the development of the hugely successful COVID tracker app, which became uh, an example of best practice internationally. And I could continue all day with examples of our team-based successes, and there are more examples in the various TVs dotted around the room here and in the other room, and I'd encourage you to peruse them at your leisure over coffee or over lunch. But the bottom line here is that all of this is only possible thanks to a collaborative ethos and collective buy-in right across the centre. And of course, a collective vision only works if you have that collective buy-in, and we have worked hard to try to ensure that right across the centre, from our operations teams, our PhD students, our postdoctoral researchers, uh, our funded investigators, and our principal investigators. And really importantly in that endeavour, we've had great support from the universities, from the presidents and the VPRs of our host universities, who've been supportive, sometimes challenging us in what we want to do, which is only right and proper, but always in the service of facilitating the vision. And I would like to take the opportunity to acknowledge and thank all of those VPRs we've worked with over the years, and indeed all members of our Governance Committee, our Scientific Advisory Committee, and our Industry Advisory Committee, some of whom are with us today. So, what is this collective vision um, I've been rabbiting on about? Well, put simply, our vision is to evolve insight to an inclusive and collegial national research centre that allows Irish researchers from across any university to come together uh, in the pursuit of excellent science for the good of society. Uh, and we've been proactive in trying to implement this vision over the last three years. So, for example, we have grown engagement within all our partner universities, with a particular emphasis on increasing participation in Minute University, University of Limerick, Trinity College Dublin, and the Tyndall National Institute. We have proactively invested in better integration of the technological universities. Uh, to this end, we allocated 450k of our internal funding from our strategic fund into these new partnerships. I'm delighted to say the uh, result of which is that we now have active collaborations with all of the TUs and DKIT. We've empowered our own researchers to propose and lead new components and aspects of the research program. We've invested in those PIs who actually stepped forward to volunteer to do so, having uh, invested 440K from our strategic fund to support this. And you'll hear from Yvonne Smith uh, a little bit later about all of these new exciting initiatives that we're kicking off across the centre. Um, I suppose what it comes down to in the end is that in Insight we have an unofficial internal motto we use um, whenever things go, go right and especially when things go wrong uh, and that is that research is a team sport. Okay, and as anyone um, who's involved in team sports will know that well number one you only make the team, you only make the cut by virtue of excellence. 
Um, but even with that, you need different types of players on a team. So you do need the flashy superstar forwards with the multicolored boots. You do need the midfield generals who can run all day. And you do need an impenetrable defence who are calm under pressure. And I leave it as a homework exercise for our FIs and PIs to figure out which one of them they actually are. Um, but of course, all of this means nothing if you are not supported by a world-class backroom team. And I'm delighted to say that we have all of that in spades in Insight and as such a fantastic platform for continuing our work into the future. I'll finish by saying a few words about AI, given its prevalence uh, in the national and international debate and, and picking up on some remarks made by, by Philip around the seismic changes we're seeing in society and the concerns and optimism around AI. You know, we celebrate our 10th anniversary when, at a time when data and AI stewardship is rapidly climbing to the top of the global political agenda. There is both hope and a lot of trepidation around how AI and digital technology will shape our civilization in the coming decades. And so often as a society, when we face seismic disruptions, we are caught out unawares and we are scrambling to put in place solutions to new emergent realities. In Ireland, Ten years ago, we had the foresight to begin the process of consolidating our data and AI expertise so that when we, it was needed, it was ready and it was there and it could be tapped into. So for example, when the pandemic, pandemic arrived, Insight was ready. We are ready now too to help Ireland and the world with the AI revolution. We're ready to deploy responsible and world-class AI solutions to whatever challenges and opportunities the future might bring. Thank you very much for your attention, folks.